Hey everybody, welcome back to day four of corn chopping here at Trinity Dairy. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know all that. It is September 9th, 2023. We're at the New Holland dealership that I have here on my property. Um, pulled this head out of the weeds. I needed a couple of these cutting wheels that cut the corn off. I think that's my issue. I'm having uh, the one side is plugging up with the dry leaves and stuff under there and then it, it gets jammed up. I pulled one of them off yesterday to take a shim out to tighten them up, but uh, there was no shims left. So I think the wheels are just worn out. And when I bought this head, one of the reasons I bought it because it was pretty smashed up was because I think these wheels have been replaced. I don't, I don't think they're original wheels. I think they're in pretty good shape. We actually pulled those two off already. Um, and you can kind of tell, I mean, there's no yellow paint or anything on them. And uh, they definitely look like they've been replaced. And I see this hub has a red colored washer on it. So somebody's been into that. As long as I've got it here, I'm gonna pull these off too. So I've got them in the shed. Uh, I'm not gonna replace this side yet just because uh, I, that side's cutting fine, so I guess I'll leave them on there for now. We also had a few comments on the last video about how long the chopper was chopping the leaves. Um, just that I probably should sharpen the knives or adjust the cutter bar or whatever. And I keep up on that pretty regular. I, I sharpened it and set the cutter bar right away before I start. And usually 10, 12 loads, I sharpen it, set the cutter bar. Now, those knives probably should get replaced because they are not actually the right knives for that chopper. Uh, if you watch back some of our earlier videos, when I first got that chopper, we were chopping oats and peas with it. And something came loose in there and hit the cutter bar and took the original knives out. So those knives are actually out of a 782 that I had. Um, so they're not, they're not the right knives and they're used knives. So they probably should get replaced. But um, the biggest issue why it's chopping the leaves so long is because a lot of the corn is short and it's thin. Um, there's not a lot of material going into the feed rollers. So the feed rollers are what hold it there so the knives can cut it. And uh, if it doesn't have enough pressure on that, the uh, leaves are just gonna get sucked through. They're not gonna chop up as well. So uh, that's the main reason because that, that chopper chops, I mean, you look at the rest of the silage, it's chopped up nice. It's just those leaves. Leaves are hard to chop anyway, especially when they're really dry like that. So anyway, we're gonna pop those off the other side and then we'll get up to the field and see if we can get these put on and hopefully that fixes our problem. And you got the hammer ball. Just that easy. That was a little trickier, but it still didn't come off too bad. But we'll stick those two up on the shelf so we got them off of there anyway. And we'll go see how the other ones come off. Well, we're up here in the silo. You can see it's full. I could maybe put about another foot in here, but 
then it's hard to get underneath the unloader to put this cover on. And I always use, I've been started using these. We never used to, but it uh, seems like it helps quite a bit getting them covers on. And I've had the air, we got the blower running, I've had the air blowing in here for a while before I come up here because that silo gas is nasty stuff. It's always something you really got to watch for because that can take you out instantly. So always try to get some air moving in here while this stuff is fermenting. But it smells, smells really good. It looks good. And you can see, yeah, there's a lot of these longer old leaves in there, but even when I've had that chopper when I first got it, when it was chopping just like flour almost, and you'd still get some of those long leaves would come through. But with the thinner corn, and then on short rows too, it, uh, on the short rows when you're ending a lot, and you get them last stalks that come in, they always chop a little longer too, but... Anyway, I'm going to try to set my phone up here so you can see. I'm going to go around the edge, kind of pull back a little bit, and then spread this cover out. And then we'll blow some silage up on top of it to seal it. before but this one was square so that made it a little interesting but um, we got it in there got it tucked in and should be good to go so now we'll go get the bagger set up and start filling that here we put a part load in of the bag we got another full load here we had a little bit of trouble so the conveyor that feeds the bagger is hydraulically driven and we fired it up and the seal on the end of that motor started just pumping oil out like crazy so um, I had another motor on the shelf in the garage same brand same part number in the casting same shaft size everything bolted it right up hooked it up well must be built different inside or something because that conveyor was running like twice as fast as it should so then I, now what are we going to do well i went over to my parts machines over there and i had a auger off of a hydraulic hydraulic driven auger off of a grinder mixer for the feed auger so that has a a variable speed hydraulic so you can you can adjust your speed without having to restrict your flow from the tractor with the tractor running wide open. So we got that on there now. Seems like it's working okay. We're gonna try it out and make sure. Um, but I think that'll be kind of nice to have on there actually to be able to regulate that flow a little bit and your, your conveyor speed. But yeah, I don't know if that one we put on there is built a little bit different or what, because it looks other than the red paint instead of blue, it's an identical looking machine piece on the outside but yeah it was I was running the tractor at three-quarter throttle and it was almost throwing the silage over the back of the panning or so we'll try this now and see what happens I should probably mention we're putting the 830 on the bagger we're gonna try that I always usually run the 1066 on there but that's working really good for hauling wagons I was gonna haul wagons with this 830 but it's with that cab on it it's kind of a pain to get in and out of when you're hooking and unhooking and stuff um, this one's just so much easier to get in and out of so we're gonna see it's an eight foot bagger I did some looking online they said the 6570 horse should run it so I guess we'll find out if not we'll have to switch over to the 10 on the bagger but we'll give it a try it's a case so I think it'll handle it
230 didn't quite have enough power to handle it. It was doing good. And once it started building pressure, um, just it was it was running it, but it was it was started overheating on us. So we don't need to be messing with that. Um, so we're gonna put the 10 on the bagger and we'll haul wagons with the other one and uh, go from there. See how that goes. But I know this will run the bagger, so that's no problem there. So we're gonna go up and uh, put those knives on that chopper head and get that going and uh, then at least we'll have that done at 8 30 i want to let it cool off a little bit because it did overheat some so we can uh, get some coolant back in there get that topped off before we use it again so we're Ow, gonna head up to the field and work on the cutter head what this shouldn't overheat nope this should be good all right well i've been messing with this head i actually did not put those other cutter wheels on yet um i climbed under there i pulled the one hub off and uh, I thought I had it, I found an extra shim, so I stuck it in there to drop that down so it was tighter. Well, then it was too tight, so I'm off like a half a shim. I couldn't really figure out why. Well, then I got looking, the bolt that holds that whole hub on, the washer was cracked, and it was, I don't know, it probably doesn't show up on camera, but it was cupped up inside the hub. So that was allowing that other hub to sit down lower and spread the gap out. So I wound up putting a new washer on there off the other head and it seems like that has tightened it up. Um, I forgot to grab my feeler gauges and bring up here but I was kind of checking it with a corn leaf compared to the other side. And it seems a lot tighter. So just greasing up now, getting that ready. Um, and then we'll go try it, see if it keeps plugging up or not. Then I'll probably put the other wheels on. But I thought if I don't have to, I'll save them for as long as I can if it's just an adjustment. That washer needed to be changed anyway because it was all split when I started messing with it. That chunk fell out. So just about done greasing here and we'll go try it out. We'll see if it worked because I couldn't even make a round on this little field yesterday and it was plugged up oh yeah clean as a whistle not a not a leaf or a stalk in there and what would happen is they'd get built up right in here and then pretty soon it starts packing underneath and then it starts raising up your gathering chains and uh, just jams everything up and then pretty soon it won't cut so that fixed that problem all it was was that goofy washer so got that taken care of and i guess that's all it was it was an easy fix so i can't really complain about that those 822 heads they kind of get a bad rap and i know why because if you're on a side hill or your corn you got a corner or something they don't corner real well but um when you kind of get used to running them they're they're a good head they're simple they're easy to work on 
they're light. I kind of, I really do like them. We had a 30-38 gale before, and that's a hard head to beat. So that's what I was used to chopping with. Um, and it's, this obviously has nothing on that. You could almost use those like a Kemper head, but um, this one, once you get used to it, I think they're a really good head. So anyway, a few thousandths of an inch, and that made all the difference. So we'll keep chopping now and keep filling the bag. Well, we're getting a little bit of rain. That's good, that'll add a little moisture. We got done chopping for the day um went pretty well i was hoping to get about 12 loads today i think we wound up chopping six but considering how late we got started after we got the bagger conveyor modifications done and uh, got the chopper going got the silo capped off which was good to get that done so uh six loads wasn't too bad and uh, i guess it was we put about eight in the bag because i had a couple chopped from last night so that went pretty good, so we'll hit it hard tomorrow, and hopefully we can uh, keep rolling on that. But anyway, um, I had a comment that somebody had sent us I wanted to talk about, and they were someone that wasn't really from a farming background, didn't have a lot of knowledge of it. So they were kind of curious as to what silage is, how you store it, how it compares to hay, or why you would feed that instead of hay. Um, and they also wanted to see what some silage looked like that was already fermented and everything. So there's many different ways to store it. And the silage, we're doing corn silage, which is the whole corn plant, the ear, stalk, leaves, everything all chopped up. You can do it with hay. You can do it with sorghum, lots of different things. It's pretty much the same process. Um, so you take the chopped corn, and there's different ways you can store it. We have the upright silos and the bags. That's the two ways we do it. Uh, there's bunk silos or pit silos or just piling on a flat slab, which is pretty much, those three are pretty much all the same. A bunker or a pit silo has sidewalls of concrete or dirt and a, you know, just a pile. You can pile right on the ground. All three of them you cover over with a sheet of plastic and seal it around the edges. That's the biggest thing. You want to have your pile of feed packed really well um, so that you want to have and you can get by with probably the most moisture content in your feed if you're piling it that's going to help it pack better if it gets too dry it doesn't pack well you can drive over it with a tractor or something to pack it put your plastic over it seal it around the edges with dirt and um, let it ferment upright silo now Ideally, you want 60 to 65% moisture, they say. With a pile, you can get by with a little more. That's about probably where you want it for an upright silo because that relies totally on the weight of the silage to pack it, to push the air out. If it gets too dry, it's not going to pack good enough. It's going to get full of air. You're going to have a lot of mold issues. You can also seal them on the top, which is like what we did up in the one today. Put a plastic cap on it and seal it off. And, and that works pretty well. Um, you 
got to be careful about getting them too too much moisture too wet in there because you can wind up with what they call juicing the silo where the, the juice will actually run through the concrete and if you do that too many times it's really hard on your on your block silos um, deteriorates the block and also like in our area when it gets really cold in the winter if your silage in there is too wet it can pretty much freeze solid and it's it's a nightmare to try to get out of there so we try not to get it too wet or too dry in an upright silo the bags that you can get by with that a little bit drier um just because the bagger you can set the pressure of how tight it packs in the bag so if it is a little bit on the dry side you can turn your pressure up a little bit and it'll pack a little bit tighter uh, you still want to make sure you have enough moisture for it to be able to ferment but you can kind of have a little bit more leeway there. Now, as far as feeding silage instead of hay, um, that's not really the case. It They're fed together. We feed, we don't really, we don't usually make haylage, what they call it, or hay silage. Um, we do, but we don't chop it. We, we have a wrapper for our round bales. So you'll see those white wrapped round bales. That's what's in there. That's just baled hay wrapped and made into silage that way just to keep the air out of it um but anyway that'll get fed separately or the dry hay in the winter we will actually mix it with the corn silage they both have different values to them that, the, that are good for the cows um, so one doesn't really replace the other one um, they just they work pretty well together so and as far as some already fermented silage i have some here in our silo room in the barn and this was we're still feeding out of our upright silo by the barn uh this is corn silage from last year and uh oh how well you can see it but it um it it, it looks pretty much the same uh it doesn't have the green in it which this stuff was a little drier when it was put up too because this had actually froze so it had a little more yellow color to it but it'll kind of get that way when it ferments also but uh yeah it a little bit of everything in there but it looks pretty much the same that probably has a little bit more corn in it actual kernels of corn than the stuff will this year just because this stuff being dry it didn't mature like it should have but um anyway so i hope that answered all the questions on that end of it kind of what we're doing and how that part of it works so anyway i'm gonna head up now and probably head to bed for the night and start again tomorrow so hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one